Good afternoon, Gaby. Good afternoon, Petronila. Good Natalia, Amanda. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, teacher. Okay, Leslie, good afternoon. Silvia, good afternoon. Okay, so I guess the other ones are going to join us later. And just remember to open the camera. Thank you, Tommy. Ivania, Caleb, and Silvia, open the camera. If you are eating, no problem. You know that you can eat. Okay, so the topic that we have today is new. So this is a new topic. Simple past was yesterday, the day before yesterday. I hope after the practice that we had yesterday, everything is clear. But today we are going to talk about, we can say about quantities or quantities. Yes. Sometimes we make reference to people in general or to some people in specific. And this is what we are going to do today. In, in this topic that we have today, as you know, we have already studied the present, the past and the future. So in this, in this structure that we have today to talk about uh, quantities, you can use them in the present, you can use them in the past, in the future, because when you talk about quantities, they are not talking about a tense. They are just talking about quantity. So they describe a specific amount or a number of things. So this is what we got today. We are going to talk about something that is related to your favorite classes. Do you remember your favorite classes when you were in school? So maybe you will tell us about it. If you tell us about your favorite classes in, in university right now, that can be in the present too. Or your favorite classes that you consider that you will have next semester, for example, in university. So you have different options. Yes, present, past, or future, as you prefer. So I'm going to show you who is Beatrice. Beatrice Omara. Is Beatrice? Is Xiomara Hernandez. Oh, but Xiomara, her first name is not Beatrice. But there is not another option. Maybe her daughter. Okay. So Beatrice Xiomara, edit your name, your first name and your last name. Please. Okay, so I was telling you. Okay, I was telling you to to talk about your favorite classes, and here we have four people, and they are talking about uh, some classes that they had when they were in school. Yes, we have the first person mentioned. The second one is Brad. Next one is Karina, and the last one is Finn. So we are going to listen to those four people describing those classes and also saying what they studied related to languages. So let's listen to them. Page 46. Lesson B. Favorite classes. 1. Building language. A. Listen, what languages did these people study in school? Mi Chung. All the students in my high school had to take English. It was required. And I needed English to get into my university. Some people need it for their jobs as well. Karina. Well, years ago, most people learned Russian and only a few people took English. I studied both. Brad. I took Spanish last year, and most of my friends did too. But only a few of us speak it well. Um, 
There are a lot of Spanish speakers around here, so it's kind of useful. Femi. A lot of my classmates dropped French after ninth grade. Almost all of them, except me. But then later, some of them had to take evening classes because they needed it for work. Now, questions about vocabulary in those four descriptions? What is the meaning of drop bell? Dropped. Dropped. Dropped means botar, dejar caer. But in this context, it's like if you say, abandonaron. A lot of my classmates dropped French classes. Another one? Another one, another one. No? Okay, so I will ask What you. is the meaning? <laughs> yes? What is the meaning a student both? Are you studied? Are you studied? both i studied i studied both both means ambos both thanks teacher you're welcome another one no okay ivania what's the meaning of a few of us, a few of us, but only a few of us. Yeah, could be. Algunos de nosotros. Mm -hmm. Algunos de nosotros or pocos, unos pocos. Unos pocos entre nosotros speak it well. Good. Let's see, Tommy. Uh, what is the meaning of get into? Get into my university. Tommy. Yeah, you can hear me? Yes. Um, get into right yes get into uh, es como como tomar entrar 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 es in, get into university entrar a universidad good uh let's see Tomara. what's the meaning of ninth grade Noveno grado. Good, good. Um, let's see who else is on. Ariel, what's the meaning of almost all of them? La mayoría de ellos. Mm -hmm. Mayoría de ellos. Maybe, or casi todos. Almost all of them, except me. Yeah. Good, thank you. Now let's listen to you reading these four descriptions. First one is going to be Michelle. Michelle is going to read the first one. Gabriela is going to read the second one. Amanda is going to read the third one. And Alejandra is going to read the fourth one. So let's listen to them. Teacher, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. 
All the students in my high school had to take English. It was required. And I needed English to get into my university. Some people need it for their jobs as well. Well, years ago, most people learning Russia, Russian, and only a few people took English. I studied both. I took a Spanish last year, and most of my friends did too, but only a few of us speak it well. Um, there are a lot of Spanish speakers around here, so it's kind of useful. A lot of my classmates dropped French after ninth grade. Almost all of them, said me. But then later, some of them had to take evening class because they needed it for a work. Okay, just pronunciation in the number one. Uh, you were saying required. The pronunciation is required in number one. In number two, the pronunciation is learned. People learned Russian, Russian. In the number three, uh, it was correct. Maybe just the part where you, where you say kind of, kind of useful, no kind of, it's of, kind of, kind of like be, kind of useful. And in the number four, uh, two pronunciations is not dropped. You need to pronounce the ed according to the rule. If it is a strong sound or a soft sound, you pronounce it like t. So you say dropped. Then the other one is evening. How to take evening evening classes? Yes, no evening. It's only two sounds. Evening two sounds. Good. Now, let's see, I will go open the door. I will be back in one minute. Okay, Natalia. So here we have to circle the correct expression to complete the sentences. First person to help me will be, let me see, Maria Argueta. How do you complete number one, Maria Argueta? Most people like English or most of people like English? Most of people like English. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Eric Argueta? Most of people, Eric Argueta, Eric Estrada. <laughs> most people like English or most of people like English? Mm, I think most people. Okay, so Maria Argueta says most of people and Eric says most people. Let's see Mario. Is Mary here? Mary Castro? Yes, no? Yes. So what do you think, Mary? I think it's most of people. Must of? Yes. Uh -huh. Elena, what do you think? Um, I think is most of people. Uh -huh. Okay, Xiomara, what do you think? I think um, most, most people. Most people. I saw in the grammar okay, uh, without uh, of if for general. <laughs> Caleb, what do you think? Okay, Simona. <laughs> Caleb? Most people. Most people. Yeah. Of. Why, Caleb? Because I think that is. No sé. O sea, inglés no sé cómo decirlo, pero la mayoría de personas en este caso creo que no, no aplica el off. Entonces, Thank you. Good job. Good example. So, people who said only must, you are correct. You are right. Yes, you are right. It is only must. 
most people. Why? Because when you say most, it's like if you say la mayoría. So you say la mayoría de personas or uh, la mayor parte de personas, si ustedes lo quieren traducir así. Pero cuando ustedes dicen most, están hablando de, de unas personas en general. ¿Cuáles son esas personas? Si yo digo, most people like English. La mayoría de personas le gusta inglés. La mayoría de personas le gusta inglés. ¿De qué personas estoy hablando? No estoy hablando de personas en específico. No estoy hablando de ningún grupo de personas en específico. Estoy hablando de las personas en general. ¿Sí? Entonces, por eso digo nada más most. Most people like English. Most people like English. No podría decir most of the people like English. That is not possible. Let's see, Michelle, number two. Must my friends study English or most of my friends study English? I, sorry. <laughs> most of my friends study English? Perfect. So you say most of my friends study English. Why most of? Because here you have a group in specific. Which friends? My friends. Ah, okay. So it is a specific group. My friends. If I only say friends, I would say only most because I don't have a group uh, of specific friends. Yes. Next one, Carla, number three. Some, some then are fluent in English or some of them are fluent in English? Uh, some of them. Good. You say some of them. You're not going to say some then. Mm -mm, it's not possible. Some of them. And we are going to see later why. The last one. Um, let's see. Someone who has not participated today. Marlene, a few people study two languages or a few of people study two languages? What is the meaning of you? Marlene? Can you hear Marlene, guys? Teacher, this, uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, what is the meaning of you? Oh, the meaning of a few. A few mean uh, unos pocos, unos cuantos. Marlene? Okay, Marlene, maybe if you enter again, maybe the microphone works better. So leave and enter again. If it doesn't happen, maybe the internet. And if it is not the internet, maybe the computer. If it is not the computer, maybe the headphones. Okay, so let's see another person. Mm, Elena. A few people study two languages or a few of people? A few people study two languages. Exactly, because we are not talking about a group of people in specific, so we cannot say of. Oh, we only say a few people. Yes? So this is what we are going to study today. How to express uh, quantities, general quantities, talking in general, or specific. When we say general, that means that we are talking about people in plural. Not only people, but but also 
um, things. For example, we can say computers. Teacher. Yes. How do you say seres vivos? You only say human beings. Human beings seres talking about vivos. people. Yeah. Or what do you mean? Plants and animals. Live beings. Live beings. Okay. And live uh, beings, porque somos seres, beings. If it is people, human beings. So we talk about things in general. In this case, we are not going to talk about things in singular. Why not? Because if we want to express something singular, we only say a, a computer, a person, a student, a teacher, a lawyer, a lamp, a street, a, I don't know, a house. So you only say a uh, in singular. But if you are talking about something plural, you need to use some words. And those words are going to express quantities or quantities. So you can express quantities using all, most, some, a few, and no. And also a lot of. Most of you most of you, most of you know the meaning of a lot of, because we studied it before. But probably you don't know the meaning of a few. Maybe you don't know the meaning of most. Yes? So this is what we are going to check today. The first one says, let's see, Caesar, can you read the first example for general in the grammar box using all? Is Caesar here? With the camera closed again, so I don't know if he's over there. Um, next person, Harrison, can you read the number one, please? In the grammar box. Some of my friends study English in my no in middle the school. Num the number one in the grammar box. All right. Uh, all children learn a language. Perfect. All children learn a language. So in that case, the meaning of all means todos. Yes. All children. Todos los niños. Estamos hablando de todos los niños en general o de algún grupo en específico. ¿Quiénes son esos niños? ¿Sabemos quiénes son esos niños específicamente? No. We are talking about children in general. From this country, from another country, and like that. Number two. Harrison, continue. Most Canadians need French. Most Canadians need French. Most Canadians. La mayoría de canadienses necesitan francés, el idioma francés. Most Canadians need French. So in this case, most, la mayoría, Canadienses. ¿Tenemos algún, algún grupo de canadienses en específico? No. Aquí incluimos a todos los canadienses. No estamos hablando de un grupo en específico. Next one. Harrison, continue. Some students take Spanish. Ok. Some students take Spanish. Algunos estudiantes eligen español o toman español. Some students take Spanish. Estamos ¿De cuáles estudiantes estamos hablando? Mm, 
Estudiantes en general. Ah, ok, entonces some students. Next one, Harrison. A few people are good at Latin. Good. A few people are good at Latin. So, a few. A few, unos pocos, unos cuantos. Yes, poquitos, a few. A few people are good at Latin. ¿Quiénes son esas personas? ¿Estamos hablando de algún grupo en específico? ¿De personas? No, estamos hablando de gente en general. ¿Continúa, Jason? No students like exams. No students like exams. Ninguno de los estudiantes, a uh, ninguno de los estudiantes le gustan los exámenes. No students like exams. A ninguno de los estudiantes. ¿De cuáles estudiantes estamos hablando? Estudiantes en general. So, when you say all, most, some, a few, and no, you are talking about people or things in general. No specific people, no specific things. Now, if you want to talk about something in specific, like a group of people in specific, a group of things in specific, you need to use of. Si están hablando ya de un grupo en específico, de unos estudiantes en específico, de unas chicas en específico, de unos carros en específico, ocupen la palabra of. Entonces, en lugar de decir all children, si ustedes ya hablan de algún grupo de, de niños en específico, ya no van a decir all children, sino que van a decir all of the children, all of the children. All of the children in my town, yes, all of the children in my town take English. All of the children in my town take English. Todos los niños de mi ciudad o de mi pueblo hablan o estudian o toman clases de inglés. ¿Estamos hablando de algún grupo de niños en específico? Sí. ¿Cuáles? Los de mi, mi pueblo, mi ciudad. Ah, ok. Entonces sí, ocupemos of a lot of the children. ¿Sí? ¿Yes? Entonces se van a ocupar a lot of, y vean lo que tienen después, the children. A lot of the children in my, my town. Number two, most, la mayoría. Most of the people in my office know French. ¿Estamos hablando de algún grupo en específico? ¿Algún grupo de personas en específico? Sí. ¿Cuáles? Los de mi oficina. Ah, ok. So, most of the people in my office. Next one. Some. Algunos. Some of the students in my class take Greek. Some of the students in my class take Greek. Algunos de los estudiantes de mi clase hablan, eh, toman o eligen el griego. ¿Estamos hablando de algún grupo en específico? Sí. ¿Cuáles estudiantes? Los de mi clase. Ah, ok. Entonces, some of the, some of the students in my class take Greek. Next one. A few, a few, unos pocos, unos cuantos. A few of my classmates got A's. A few of my classmates got A's. Estamos hablando de unos cuantos de mi clase. ¿Estamos hablando de algún grupo en específico? Sí. ¿De cuáles? De mis compañeros. Y mis compañeros son un grupo en específico y solamente ellos obtienen los A's. And the last one, no, no, ninguno. Pero veamos qué pasaría si hablamos de un grupo en específico. Ya no vamos a decir no, sino que vamos a decir none. None of my friends failed the exams. Ninguno de mis amigos falló el examen. None of my friends failed the exams. A's en, en la parte de arriba es como, como que ustedes se sacaron 10. Entonces sacaron A, 10 es. Uh, and in the last one, none of my friends failed exams. Ninguno de mis amigos reprobó el examen.
Yes, none of my friends failed the exam. So, a group in specific? Yes, which ones? My friends are uh, okay. And like that. So, summarizing. Si ustedes tienen un grupo de personas, un grupo de cosas, un grupo de, de, de animales, de plantas, de lo que ustedes quieran, si ustedes tienen un grupo de algo y ese grupo es de una manera general, no se están refiriendo a un grupo en específico, entonces ponga solamente la palabra all, most, some, a few, you know. Si usted se refiere a un grupo en específico, entonces ocupe la palabra of y le pone da. Y si no, si no va a hablar de, de, por ejemplo, de los niños, los compañeros, sino que va a decir mis compañeros, mis niños. Entonces ahí solamente va a poner my, ya no va a poner da my children. Solamente a few of my classmates, all of my classmates, most of my classmates. Pero si se fijan en el específico, cuando llegan a la primera parte, que es all, en paréntesis van a encontrar of. ¿Y por qué all tiene en paréntesis of y el resto no lo tiene? Sencillo. Porque usted cuando está hablando de algo específico, usted puede decir all of the children, all of the books, all of the computers. Y si no quiere ocupar of con all, solamente dice all. Y se vale. Ese all se puede ocupar para general y para específico. Entonces usted puede decir, all the children in my town take English class. ¿Y cómo se va, se va a saber que ya es específico? Porque ahí tiene the children. Y vea el primero, solamente dice all children. Todos los niños, pero no ocupamos the. Most Canadians, no ocupamos the. Pero si ya le ponemos most of the, ya vamos a hablar de un grupo en específico. Yes, but you need to pay attention because with the word a lot of, a lot of can be used for general and for specific. So you would say a lot of people speak English well. A lot of people speak English well. General, muchas personas. ¿Quiénes son esas personas? No sabemos, personas en general. Okay, a lot of, pero se ocupó of. ¿Por qué? Porque esa palabra ya va así. A lot of. No la tienen que mover. Now, the next one. A lot of the people in this city speak English. A lot of the people in this city speak English. Yes? Entonces, allí ya está hablando de un grupo en específico. ¿Cómo sabe? Porque ya le puso the, the people in this city. ¿De cuáles personas estamos hablando? De las de esta ciudad, no las de otra ciudad. Yes? So, a lot of the people in this city speak English. Yes? And the last one. If you have pronouns, si ustedes ocupan pronombres, allí no van a poder decir nada más all, most, some, a few or none, or a lot. Necesitan decir a lot of them, all of them, all of them, most of them, some of them, a few of them, none of them. Si quieren utilizar otro pronombre, algunos de ellos, la mayoría de ellos. Entonces va a decir all of them, most of them, some of them, a few of them, none of them. Está hablando de ellos. Si usted quiere decir a todos, uh, todos de ellas, todas ellas, entonces lo mismo, all of them. Them se va a ocupar para él y para él. Pero no va a poder decir all of they. All of they, mm -mm. Yes. Ahora, si quiere decir uh, todos nosotros, all of us, la mayoría de nosotros, most of us, algunos de nosotros, some of us, unos cuantos de nosotros, a few of us, ninguno de nosotros, none of us, muchos de nosotros, a lot of us. Yes. So, you use pronouns and the, the ones that are allowed in this case are them and us. Because you are talking about plural. So in plural, we only have we, you, and they. So in pronouns, you will use them, us, or you. All of you. 
most of you, some of you, a few of you, none of you, a lot of you. Yes? So you would use it like that. Any questions about it? Excuse me, it's raining. Where is it raining, Sumana? Here in San Marcos, it's raining okay. a little bit. <laughs> okay, maybe for the cigalas, because the Holy Week is coming, so they usually appear on the Holy Week, and supposedly they get out of the ground because of a rain, so you need a rain, and those animals get out of the ground. That's the theory. Okay, questions about the grammar section? No? Okay, let's see if it is real. Caesar, can you explain it to me? What? Can you explain? to me how to use all all of most of or only most some some of a few of a few no none and like that Caesar, your microphone is closed. I don't know if you are talking to me or to someone else, but if you are talking to me, open the microphone. Um, the general or the specific? I don't know. <laughs> no, I just want that you explain to me what I said. In other words, summarizing. Um, the all children is is a is a people in general big but I don't know eh no sé cómo explicarlo no explíquemelo en español entonces a ver si entendió Okay de eh lo la parte que está en general es como para en sí como para una para una persona no perdón 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 para para cómo se no sé cómo decirlo okay let's see another person Leslie, can you explain it to me? Uh, I can explain it. Yes. Okay. Um, general is para ciertas personas en general. El usar all, most, some, a few, son para personas en general. Personas you know, all, all, most, all. Personas o cosas en general. Ajá, personas o cosas. Y el all, all es para en específico. Grupos en espe específico, cosas en específico. Para un grupo de cosas en específico, para un grupo de personas en específico. Entonces, ese of va a ser la diferencia. Pero lo que se tienen que fijar es que después de que ustedes dicen most of, después siempre viene el artículo da. Most of the people, no solamente people, sino que es the, uh -huh. porque ya es un grupo en específico. 
O si en el caso voy a ocupar el posesivo como por ejemplo my classmates, ahí ya no va a decir a few of the my classmates. Porque no puede decir unos cuantos de los mi compañeros. De los mi compañeros no existe. Entonces, unos cuantos de mis compañeros. A few of my classmates. Yes? Good. Thank you, Leslie. So, as Leslie said, general, you only use all, most, some, a few, and no. Specific, all of, or only all, most of, the, some of, the, a few of, the, or the possessive, a few of my, a few of your, a few of their, a few of um, his, her, and like that. And known is different from no. In general, you would say no students, no people, no teachers, no neighbors, a ninguno de los vecinos, a ninguno de mis vecinos. Entonces, ahí cambiaría. Yo diría, none of my neighbors, none of my neighbors speak French. None of my neighbors, yes, there is one. But, so, uh, imagine that I don't have neighbors that I speak French, so none of my friends speak French. Why do you say none of? Because I'm saying my friends, my, my neighbors, sorry, my neighbors, a group in specific of neighbors. But if I say no, no neighbors speak French, no neighbors, ningunos vecinos. No estoy hablando de algunos vecinos en específico, estoy hablando de vecinos en general. So, no neighbors speak French. Your neighbors, my neighbors, other neighbors, no one. No people. Yes? So, that's the difference. And remember to use pronouns like them, us, or you. And you will say all of them, all of us, most of you, most of them, most of us, some of you, some of them, some of us, a few of them. A few of you, a few of us, none of them, none of you, none of us. And remember that when you say a lot of, when you say a lot of, you always have it in general or in specific. You don't change it. So a lot of is always like that. A lot of people in general or a lot of the people in a specific, a group of people. Yes. Now I'm going to stop over here just to tell you something. But I hope you don't get confused, just in case you see it later, because this is very important. Sometimes you're going to find uh, you are going to find this lots of people, lots of people, and this is possible. You can say lots of people. And this is similar to say a lot of people, a lot of people. You can say lots of people or a lot of people, and the meaning is the same. You can say lots of students or a lot of students. You can say lots of books or a lot of books, and the meaning is the same. But you need to pay attention because a lot of can be for things that are not countable like for example oil water so you can say a lot of water but you will never say lots of water that is impossible yes so lots is only for plural and a lot of can be for singular for, for no countable and for plural for countable and like that so, lots, and the word in plural is similar to say a lot of, a lot of people or lots of people, yes? So, just in case you see it, you have to understand that it's similar to say a lot of, and it exists, yes? It's sometimes common to see it on books so that you will find it sometime, yes? Now, people usually say everybody and nobody. Not all people or no people. So, what is this? 
normalmente usted puede decir uh, toda la gente toda la gente come desayuno all people eat breakfast sí se puede decir all people eat breakfast pero también es bastante común que se ocupe la palabra everybody sí entonces te dice everybody eats breakfast y ese everybody se refiere a all people. Entonces esa es otra palabra que ustedes van a encontrar también que es bastante común. Ahora, si ustedes quieren decir uh, ninguna, pers ninguna, ninguna persona, entonces van a decir no people. Y si no quieren decir no people, es más común que ustedes digan nobody. Nobody. Nobody likes exam. Nobody plays tennis. Uh, nobody lives. Okay, Ale. Nobody lives in Nahuachapan. Yes, from this class. So, that word nobody or everybody is very common. Yes. Also, you can say not all people, not all people, no todas las personas. Esa es otra manera de decirlo. Not all people, no todas las personas. Not all people have money right now. Yes, not all people. Not all people have money right now. Or you say no people have money right now. No people have money right now. And like that. So you can use also those Words. Everybody replacing to all people, nobody replacing no people, or if you want to use it, no problem, you can say no people, or if you want to say all people, you can say it, but I'm telling you that is more common to say everybody to replace all people, and nobody to replace no people, yes? So this is just a little explanation. And you have to remember that when you say lot of, you need to use a, a lot of students, a lot of people, a lot of friends, because the second option is lots. But if you say lots, you use the S and you don't use a. Yes, lots of people or a lot of people, which is more common, a lot of now here you have to make the sentences using all or all of most or most of some or some of a few or a few of no or none of a lot of and like that so we are going to start with the number one number one will be tommy they have to be positive positive things All of my friends are studying English in the middle school. Could be. Could be. All of my friends studied English in middle school. Good. En ese caso, Tommy quiere expresar que todos sus amigos estudiaron. Pero posiblemente, si le preguntamos a Ivania, Ivania va a decir que no fueron todos sus amigos, sino que fueron unos cuantos. Entonces, Ivania puede decir, a few of my a friends few. studied English in middle school. O si le preguntamos a Ariel, a lo mejor Ariel va a decir que solamente algunos de sus amigos fueron estudiar en inglés. Entonces Ariel va a decir, some of my friends studied English in middle school. Yes. So this is uh, open. This is open. Why? Because your life is different from the other ones. So maybe you have more friends than the other person. And that's why you have a different quantity. Good. Continue, Marlene. Marlene, Marlene. All middle school students take English. Do you use, what do you use for general or for a specific? General. ¿Está hablando? ¿De quién está hablando, Marlene? Específico. Uh, 
¿De quién está hablando? Los estudiantes. ¿Estudiantes en general o algún grupo en específico? Un grupo en específico. ¿Cuál es ese grupo específico? De la escuela. Ah, ¿verdad que tiene? Middle school. ¿De dónde son esos estudiantes? Son específicos. ¿Qué tipo de estudiantes? ¿Cuáles estudiantes? De middle school. No son solamente estudiantes, sino que es un grupo ya en específico. ¿Cuál? Middle school. Entonces, no solamente va a ocupar O, oh, ¿qué va a ocupar? O los. Uh -huh. Trate de completarlo. O los miro el estudiante, school student take English. Uh -huh. vea, vea los ejemplos que tienen específico y vea lo que tiene después de A. Uh. What is the meaning middle? Middle school is estudiantes de, de digamos, secundar, de primaria sería en este caso, de escuela. All of the middle school students take English, maybe? Exactly. All of the, porque cuando ya tiene un grupo en específico, usted va a ocupar la palabra the. Yes, all of the middle school students take English. Yes, si no quiere ocupar of con o, si lo puede omitir y puede decir all oh, the middle school students take English, pero siempre va a poner el the porque está hablando de un grupo en específico. Sí, en, en escuela, en la escuela. Eh, existe elementary school, middle school, and high school. And you have even junior high school. So you have middle, eh, elementary, middle, junior, and high school. Entonces, es como, como que dijéramos, segundo ciclo, probably. Segundo ciclo, no, segundo, how do you say that? Ya, yeah, segundo ciclo, in school. Cuarto, quinto, sexto. Segundo ciclo, how do you say that? Segundo, segundo ciclo. Segundo ciclo, so that would be something like middle school, segundo ciclo. Okay, so in the first one, my friends specific. ¿Cómo van a saber que son específicos? Porque tienen que ponerle da o tienen que ponerle my, or his, or her, or their. Posesivos. Number two. Uh, María Argueta, today. Uh, most of employees need a second language for their jobs. What do you say? Most or most of? Most of. Are you talking about general or specific people? Um, specific. And what is specific? Employees. And yes, but employees is trabajadores. ¿Cuáles trabajadores? All the cases in general. Mm -hmm. Para que Because ustedes no it's not a specific uh, group. Uh, company. It's not a specific company. It's not a specific group. Exactly. Entonces, para saber que si es específico, usted está... Hola, Carla. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo está? What? Ok, para saber que es específico, ustedes tienen que que hacerse la pregunta de quién estoy hablando, ah, de los trabajadores, ok. Ahora, si dice cuáles trabajadores en específico, entonces sí es específico. 
Si no dice cuáles trabajadores, entonces no se puede. Eso sería general. Vean el ejemplo de arriba, en la, en la caja, en la grammar box. All children learn language. Learn a language. Todos los niños hablan un idioma. Estamos hablando de niños, pero ¿cuáles niños? Solo dice niños, no dice cuáles. Entonces son general. Ahora vámonos para la derecha. All of the children in my town take English. ¿De quién estamos hablando? De los niños, sí, pero ¿de cuáles niños? Ah, de los niños de mi ciudad. Ah, entonces estos son específicos, no son todos los niños. Aquí son un grupo en específico, los niños de mi ciudad. Vámonos en el segundo. Most Canadians need French. ¿De quiénes estamos hablando? De los canadienses. ¿Cuáles canadienses? Sabemos qué grupo en específico, solo dice que los canadienses, general. Veamos el otro. Most of the people in my office. ¿De quiénes estamos hablando? De la gente. ¿Cuál es gente? De las de mi oficina. Ah, ok, entonces eso es específico, ya tiene un grupo eh, eh, delimitado. ¿Sí? ¿Sí? So, that makes a difference. If we go to the first example in, in the, the exercises, it says, my friends, my friends. ¿De quién estamos hablando? My friends, mis amigos. ¿Es un grupo delimitado? Sí, ¿cómo sé? ¿Cuáles? ¿Cuáles amigos? Mis amigos. Ah, sí, es, es específico, ya sé cuáles. Entonces, pone all of my friends, a few of my friends, some of my friends, el que a usted le parezca. Pero ya es específico. Si dice middle school students take English, ¿de quiénes estamos hablando? De los estudiantes. ¿Cuáles estudiantes? Los de middle school. Ah, entonces son un grupo ya específico. Entonces podemos ocupar a few of, none of, some of, uh, all of, y luego ocupamos la. ¿Por qué? Porque aquí no tiene my, ni his, ni her, ni their. No tiene posesión. Entonces, la. Number two. Uh, María Argueta said that we are talking about employees. Ok, estamos hablando de los trabajadores. ¿Cuáles trabajadores? No sé, no dice ahí cuáles, no dice si es de alguna empresa, no dice que son los trabajadores del de Salvador, no está hablando de un grupo en específico. Entonces eso es general. No puedo ocupar of aquí, solo puedo ocupar all, uh, a few, some, no, uh, a lot of, es la única palabra que se puede ocupar. ¿Cómo? ¿Sí? Porque no estamos hablando de un grupo en específico. Now, continue, Eric. It says, companies require English skills to get a job. Some companies require English skills to get a job. Perfect. Some companies require English skills to get a job. What are we talking about, Eric? We are talking about companies, but in general. Perfect. We are talking about a companies. Which companies? We don't know. Ah, okay. So general. Good. Next one, Alejandra. My friends speak two languages. Alejandra. Is Alejandra here? Alejandra. Well, she was here. I don't know what happened to her. Uh, Priscila. The second one, the number three. The first one in number three. Um, some of my friends speak two languages. Good. It could be some, it could be all, it could be a few of, and like that. Yes. Uh, uh, some of my friends 
all of my friends or only all my friends, a few of my friends. Why? Because you are using something specific. What are you talking about? About friends. Which friends? My friends. Ah, okay, specific group. Michelle, continue. Them speak three languages. Um, give me a second. Some of them speak three languages. Three could languages. Be. It could be. Some of them speak three languages or a few of them speak three languages. Yes. Good. Amanda, number four. College students major in languages. Some college students major in languages. Major, major. Good. Some college students, you said. Amanda? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Can you repeat your answer? Ah, okay. Some college student major in language. What are you talking about? Uh, students, but in general. In general. Student major in general. Are you sure I that is general? No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. Some of the college students major in language. Yes, we are talking about a group in specific of students. Which students? College students, not high school students, no school students. Yes, college, university students. So it is a group in specific. Tommy, continue. Some the college here teach several different language. Can you, can you repeat it to me? Some from the college here teach several different language languages. What are you talking? What are you talking about, Tommy? Sobre sobre el, el, los diferentes maestros de idiomas en el ah, colegio. ¿Dónde tienen maestros ahí? ¿Dónde tienen la palabra maestros? No, como de enseñar. No es maestro, porque teach es teach. Teach es enseñar, eh, pero no. la pregunta es de quién está hablando, no qué acción hay allí. Oh, de los diferentes lenguajes. No. Michelle, do you raise your hand? Yes, teacher, I have a question. Mm -hmm. The sentence number four, the first sentence mm -hmm. of the number four uh, said college is students. But I hear you uh, only some of, but my, my question is you are at uh, the word you always use after it. Uh, before college. You always use it. Some of the college students, some of the college students, some of the college students. You always use the. Some of them. Uh, okay. I can, I can I can try answer you again. Okay, Tommy. It's all of the college here teach several different languages. Oh, why? Why do you change your your mind? Ah, uh, porque está hablando de los colegios, como todos los colegios acá enseñan diferentes lenguas. Está hablando en específico de los colegios. 
Ajá, no son colegios, son, son colleges. Colleges son como universidades. Ajá, como universidades. Uh -huh. sí. Exactly. So you are talking about colleges. Which colleges? Sí. Colleges here. Oh, okay. A specific colleges. Okay. So you are right, Tommy. Good. Ale Castro, number five. So um, students take two foreign language in high school? Good. Some students take two foreign languages in high school. Yes, it could be some, it could be a few, it could be uh, all. Yes. Here you are talking about students. Which students? We don't know, general. And the last one, Caleb. In my class. Okay, in my class. Some of us studied two foreign languages. Good. In my class, some of us studied two foreign languages. Yes, some of us. Good. So this is how you use those words. Do you have any questions? No? Teacher. Mm -hmm. No? Okay. So that means that if we have an exam right now, you get 10. Because you don't have... Not really. What do you say, Sylvia? Nine point Not nine. really. <laughs> 9.5. Maybe. <laughs> okay, good. So if you don't have any questions, we are going to see it in the speaking activity that we are going to have in some minutes. But before studying uh, that part that is speaking, we are going to see some subjects. Do you know the meaning of subject, Caesar? Can you hear me, guys? I don't know if I'm speaking alone. If he's in the yes, teacher. Room. Yes, teacher. Yes. Yeah. Caesar, are you in class? Yes, but sometimes I can hear you. I can hear you. My my internet. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Look at what Sylvia is saying. Okay. Now, Caesar, um, do you know the meaning of subjects? Asignatura. Perfect. So, subject can have two meanings. One is sujeto and the other one is asignatura or materia. Yes? So we are going to talk about subjects, but subjects related to school. Yes, related to school. So here you have a list. And here you have building vocabulary. Listen and say the subjects. Then you will circle your three favorite subjects. Three favorite subjects. So, how many subjects do you have? How many do you have? How many do you have? 19. 19. Thank you. Thank you. You have 19 subjects. From those 19 subjects, you will choose only three favorite subjects that you had in school or high school. There are some of them that we never received them. And that is obvious. There are some of them that we never received them. But uh, the ones that you received, probably you, you received maybe 10, choose only three. So let's listen to them. Teacher. And uh, what's the meaning of Track. Uh, 
like when you follow when you follow something like uh the steps of something when you buy a product sometimes you buy a product and then you don't know where the product is so you track on it tractor no sylvia you you keep track of that it's like follow something investigate about something sorry what do you say no sorry sorry Ale? nothing sorry sorry it was for my cat okay so track is like like let's say that you buy a pair of shoes on ebay or amazon so you shop online they give you a code you introduce the code in your computer in the system and you can see where the product is going so that is track you follow something you investigate where something is and like that yes so let's listen to the subjects and then you will tell me which uh, of the subjects were your three favorite ones Building vocabulary. A. Listen and say the subjects. Circle your three favorite subjects. Tell a partner. Algebra. History. Economics. Geography. Band. Track. Orchestra. Chemistry. Choir. Dance. Geometry. Calculus. Drama. Biology. Physics. Literature. Gymnastics. Computer studies. Art. Okay, now let's see. We have algebra, that was the, the first one, history, and the rest of them. So let's see one by one. First, we are going to pronounce them. And we are going to start with Kalev. You are going to start from algebra until track. Sylvia from orchestra until calculus. Um, let's see, Xiomara from drama until literature, and Marlene from gymnastic until computer studies. Okay, algebra, history, economics, geography, band, and track. Geography, geography. Sylvia? No. Orchestra, chemistry, choir, dance, geometry, calculus. Next one. Next one. Xiomara is not here. Well, I, okay. mm -hmm. um, drama, drama, mm -hmm. um, physics. No, well, yes, you're reading like this: drama, physics. Uh, oh, drama, biology, uh -huh. physics, 
y li, literature. 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 Okay. Literature. Continue. Uh, last person, Marlene. Gymnastic, computer studies, art. Good. Thank you. So those are the subjects. Now, what are, or maybe in the past, what were your favorite subjects? Let's see, Ale Castro, what were your favorite subjects? The three favorite subjects that you had. Um, there are um, art, chemistry. Chemistry. Uh, chemistry. Uh, literature. 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 Good. Priscilla? Uh, history, geography, and literature. Good. Tommy? Um, I guess uh, geometry and geography studies. Chemistry and what do you say? Uh, wait. I only heard the sound. I'm sorry. Uh, can you see me? Yes. Now? Better. Uh, okay. Um, I say uh, or just or just a computer studies. Studies. And geometry. Studies. I'm sorry. And geometry. Okay. Geometry. Harrison. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Are you in class, Harrison, or working? I don't listen. Okay, can you tell me the three favorite subjects that you have? I don't listen the song. What do you mean? There are 19 subjects in the grammar, well, in the box, not in the grammar box, but in the box, you have 19 subjects. I need you to tell me your three favorite subjects. Um, drama, oh. geometry, and calculus. Did you have drama? in school um no but i like it. Ah, okay you didn't have it in school but you like it okay maybe good michelle um chemistry mm -hmm. uh tour and com computer computer studies. Okay, good. Now, what are you going to do? You're going to put the subjects that you have in the box in the corresponding category. Here you have six categories and you have to put those subjects in the corresponding category. The first category is social studies. The second one is music. The next one is science. The next one is mathematics. The next one is physical education. And the last one is other subjects. So I need you to put them into the corresponding category. I will give you two minutes for you to put them in the corresponding category.
Lucian. Right now they are putting the, the subjects that you can see on the top into the corresponding category. For example, if we have algebra, that is in social studies, mathematics, music, physical education, science, or in others. We put them into the correct place. Teacher, what is the meaning of choir? Uh, it is like coro. Oh, okay, thanks. Coro de cantar. Okay, now let's check the answers. Maria Argueta, social studies, what do you have? Economics, history, and geometry. Oh, okay. geography, sorry. Ah, geography. Is that correct, Kana? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, so she said three. Now, Sylvia, music. Orchestra, choir, and band. So she mentioned three. Is that correct, Anne? Anne. You got lost. Alejandra. Is that correct? She got lost too. Um, Priscilla, is that correct? I have more. What do you have? Dance. I don't know how do you say, how do you pronounce uh, <laughs> Sure, I don't know how how do you pronounce that. But but she has already she has already mentioned it. Yes, and orchestra and band. Okay, so the only one that you have difference is dance. You have four mm -hmm. and she has three. Mm hmm. We are going to see it later. Uh, Ariel, science. Mm, chemistry, biology, geography. Chemistry, biology, and? Geography. Geography. Yes, yes, geography. 
Geography in Science, Geografía en la Ciencia. Ok. What do you think, Xiomara? In science, in science, I think that chemi chemistry and biology. Chemistry and biology only. Yes. Okay. We are going to see it later. Uh, Leslie, mathematics. Geometry, calculus, algebra. 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 Cesar? What do you have in mathematics, Cesar? The same. Uh, algebra, geometry, in calculus. Okay. Next one. Michelle, physical education. I have only two, dance and gymnastic. Dance and gymnastic, okay. Yes. Amanda, what do you have in physical education? I have only gymnastic. Only gymnastic. Okay, let's see, Ivania, what do you have in physical education? Mm, only gymnastic. Only gymnastic. It's raining here. It's raining, too, sir. Okay. Let's see other subjects. This one is for... Is Harold here? Harold? And there's no... No, he is here. So, Petronila, other subjects. I have computer students. Studies. Literature. Oh, sorry. Literature and art. Uh -huh. And Lucio, what do you have? Literature. Literature. Uh, literature. Computer studies. Mm -hmm. And... Yes, I think so. Okay, let's see last person. Let's see. Karna, what do you have in other subjects? A track, computer studies, art, and drama. Okay, so you added more. Good, thank you. Now we are going to check the answers. They are going to appear over there on the right. Number one, for social studies. There you have economics, geography, and history. Number two, this one was Silvia. Silvia, uh, no, mathematics. This one was Leslie. Leslie, can you read mathematics? Geometry, calculus, algebra. Good. Silvia, can you read music? Band, choir, orchestra. 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 So you had only three. Um, Gabriela, physical education. Can you read it? Um, dance, gymnastic, and track. Okay, dance, gymnastic, and track. Why track here? Because you can follow a track. If, if you translate it, it is like monitoreo or seguir algo. Yes? Uh, dar seguimiento. But uh, also you can use it for when you are in a in a competition and you are running that can be a track too 
because you are following to get to the to the objective or to the goal. So in Spanish, it is like seguimiento when you are talking about products or rastreo. But if you are talking about uh, and, and if you are talking about music, it's pista. If you are talking about recreation, is when you follow someone because you are running. Es seguimiento, pero en una pista. Que usted corre como carrera o I don't know how to say, it, but it's track. You only run around. How do you say it? Pista de patinaje. No. Track and field, probably. Track and field, like that. En el, pero en español, ¿cómo se dice eso? Track and field. Es como una rama de atletismo. Ajá, como atletismo, pero no es, no es en sí atletismo. But it's like atletism, let's say. It's similar, but it is track and field. La contracción sería nada más track, que es como correr en una pista. And like that. Yes? So that is in this case. If you are talking about something different, could be rastreo o seguimiento, lo ocupan mucho en logística. Podría ser, ¿verdad? Pero eso ya sería como más un, una materia de, de universidad. Porque ahí sí ya es logística de producto, a dónde lo envían, le van a dar seguimiento para ver hasta dónde llegó el producto, etc. So those are the only three they have. Dance, gymnastics, and track. And the last one, uh, let's see, Gabriela, can you read it? Biology, chemistry, chemistry. and... <laughs> repeat, please, teacher. Chemistry. Chemistry and physics. Chemistry and physics, good. Okay, we are going to listen to it for the last time because you are going to use them in the activity that we are going to have. So listen to the pronunciation of those subjects. Page 47. 3. Building vocabulary. A. Listen and say the subjects. Circle your three favorite subjects. Tell a partner. Algebra History Economics Geography Band Track Orchestra Chemistry Choir. Dance. Geometry. Calculus. Drama. Biology. Physics. Literature. Gymnastics. Computer studies. Art. Okay, so now what are you going to do? You're going to tell your classmates your experiences in classes in one of these subjects. So something that you remember about the past so I can tell you, for example, uh, I remember once when I was in school, we had a class of literature. And in that class of literature, we had a teacher that was a psychologist. He, he taught that subject 
but he was a psychologist too. So he always assigned uh, some books that we had to read, like novels, and we had to read every two weeks a new novel and like that. So once, at the beginning, it was easy because you only read the book, and then you had to answer some questions about the book and like that. But later, he decided that we needed to analyze the, the story of the book, that we needed to identify if one of the characters in the book <laughs> had a psychological problem or if one of the characters in the book had a, an emotional problem or if one of the characters in the book had a strong personality or things like that. So it was very difficult because when you read a, a book, you don't pay attention to how the person was. You try to identify what happened, how the story begins, what happens in the middle and how the story ends. But he needed that we analyzed all the characters all the events, reactions, and like that, because he was a psychologist. So I just remember that in one of one of the classes, one of my friends got really mad because the teacher uh, demanded too many things, and then he said, "My my my friend said, so is this a literature class or a psychology class?" And then everyone looked at him like, why do you say that? And the teacher got mad. So at the end, my friend had to go to the principal's office because he said it like that, but he didn't say it in that way. He was angry. So he said it like in a wrong way. And that was the solution, I think, because the next day the teacher didn't ask us about that. So that was like, the solution we can say about that because he was asking too many things and at the end it was real we were analyzing but we were probably expecting something different like when did it happen is it related to the first uh, world war is it related to the second world war or is it related to the i don't know to the middle east or things like that related to history and how do you identify the characters but not talking about psychological things or emotional things but because he was a psychologist he wanted in that way but my friend got mine he he claimed about it at the end he went to the principal's office principal's office is direction or oficina del director principal's office and uh I don't know what happened to him. I guess they only told him not to be rude when he's talking to teachers, but he, he wasn't expelled from school because he arrived uh, at the class. But next day, the teacher changed what he was trying to ask. It was like a normal class of literature. So that's my experience. Probably, oh, and I have another one about physical education, but maybe one of you works with me and I will tell you that was funny. That was funny. So tell your classmate about it. You can also include what we studied some minutes ago. What did we study some minutes ago? We studied this. Hold on. We studied this. How to express quantities. So you can say, he asked uh, too many questions and some of my friends uh, liked the class, but most of the students didn't like it, yes? And I remember that all of us asked the principal to change the teacher and like that but no one or none because remember that you can say no one nobody or none of my friends said anything when they were in front of the principals so 
all of us return to the class and they never change the teacher. Or you can say, I remember about one day that I arrived really late. All students were in the classroom and most of them had a notebook and a pen. I didn't know what happened, so I asked some of my friends about it, but they didn't say anything because a few minutes ago, the teacher said not to say anything to people that are right late. So I didn't know what to do. So what I did was to get out of the class and wait for another partner to come late so that the teacher probably would assign us another activity. But no students arrive late. And I had to wait at the door until the class ended. And that was so sad. So that's not real. It's just an example I'm just inventing. But obviously, you have your own experiences, so you can tell your classmates about it. Is it clear? Teacher, can you repeat the word assignar? The word? Assignar. Assigned. Oh, the verb. Assigned. Assigned. The verb assigned. A S S I N I G N. I will type. Assigned in the past with in the How do you say los becados? I think. Yes. Yes. Sorry. The scholarship guys, I think. Students will be better. Or you can say benefiers because they are like beneficiaries, benefiers, scholarship benefiers, like that. So work with your classmate and talk about your experiences when you were in school or when you were in high school about any subject, what happened, try to use those expressions, some, some of, when you have specific people and like that. And remember this, you can not only use it for the past, you can use it for the present and for the future, but I think that it's more difficult for you to, to express your ideas in the past. So this is the best way for you to do it, practice. So you're gonna work in pairs and I guess one of you is gonna work with me. So the one that is gonna work with me, I'm gonna tell you about my experience in a physical education class. It didn't happen to me, it happened to a girl, but that was so funny, funny, for the rest of people, but not for her. But we are going to enter right now. Enter, guys. Enter Amanda. Hi, Elena. <laughs> hi, hi, teacher. <laughs> You're going to work with me. So do you want to tell me about your experience in school or high school in one of your subjects? Uh, well, yes, I, I have a uh, history of my high school. Uh, when I was in the high school, I had a teacher of mathematics. <laughs> um, his name was Jose, but I don't, uh, but I don't know the, the other names, but <laughs> we call him 
Chepito. Uh, <laughs> y he, he, he was very ugly man and a bad person. We, no, he talked with, with youth about the mathematics and other things uh, one day. I don't know the the topic, uh, but I was I I was receiving. Uh -huh. But I I was in the in the class and with my friends <laughs> and my group, and he said uh, that we we are. Uh, uh, I don't know. ¿Cómo decir bruja? Which we are which, and then I I was so impacted, and we we are uh, we were uh, so angry with my friends and I because he insults you insulted us insult us and in the next day uh, i i went to the principal um office office the, i went to the principal office and i tell i tell i told to my director or principal, principal um that was happened in the yesterday yeah. and i don't i don't remember you don't remember what happened with the teacher uh -huh. i i think that no, i don't know como decir lo quitaron o lo escribieron he was fired and he was fired uh, the next year that I graduate. Uh, graduated. graduated. Uh, but one day uh, in my university and uh, in the US, uh, the, the before year, I don't know, the year of I, I graduate, he tell me that when when I saw him, I don't talk, I don't talk, I don't talk with him. And I said, okay, go back. And when I was in the university, my first year, uh, one day I, I saw him and he talked with me and he said, Hi, hi, then I must be like eh, what happened? He's como si fuera mi amigo. Like if he was my friend. Uh -huh, like was my friend. And um, well I talked with 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 him, but he's he's weird a weird person. I was remember I, I remember that when you when you talk about your class okay good and did you go alone to the principal's office or you went with your friends no i talk uh, alone with the principal of in the principal office with the principal only me because uh, i i was uh a president of my oh uh -huh. so i was very important in the in the, in the grade just kidding so, <laughs> but, did, did all did all your classmates support you yes yes uh, because a, a lot of my classmates uh, heard a uh, he, he said he said he said 
us. He told us. He told us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, do you see your friends in university? I mean, do you have the same friends that you used to have when you were in high school? Or you have different friends? Yes, I, I have the Do you have a friend next to you? Is <laughs> Daisy. What's I, her name? It is it's Daisy. She's my best friend. She was, she was my classmate in the high school too, in the middle school. And she knows Chepito too. She knows Chepito, okay. <laughs> now, do you study the same career? No, but uh, he knows English. <laughs> what do you say, Elena? She knows English. She speaks English? Yes. Okay, good. So she can help you. <laughs> yes. Good. All right. What, yeah. else, what else can you tell me? What? What else can you tell me? I don't know. No. What else can you tell me about school or high school? Um. Well, uh huh. I <laughs> I had a favorite. Very friendly. It was my girl biology or and science. And she was a very old woman. And, but she was very, very smart. Really. I can hear you, Lena. The function of the compu, mija. Hi. I can hear you now. <laughs> okay. Uh, I I don't know if you can uh, hear me. I, I will tell you about my experience because we are almost finishing the class. So mine okay. was mine was in physical education. So physical education in high school was a little bit weird because I think that the teacher didn't have like a, like a plan for every class. So what he did was to select someone. Uh, and what do you want to do today? And then he asked, and then someone said, oh, I want to play soccer. So we used to go to the field and play something. And uh, I remember that once he, he asked one of my classmates, and it was a girl, and what do you want to do today? And then she said, why don't we run around the field, the, the, the basketball court or the, the basketball field? And then he said, okay, let's run. But then she said, but why don't we do it like girls against boys? And then the teacher said, okay, let's do it. And every, I think that everyone was like excited because of that, because we will have girls against boys. So some of my friends, that they were boys, they were, in, let's say, around the, the court. And some girls were, let's say, like, like boys on the right and girls on the left. And in the middle, between boys and girls, there was a line where someone had to run. It had to be one boy and one girl. So the thing was that uh, you didn't know who they had to compete with because probably you were short and you had to compete with a guy that was really tall. So that guy that was tall obviously would arrive first. But, uh, or the opposite, maybe you were really tall and then you had a, but you were a little heavy and maybe you have someone that was short and, and skinny. So 
that was like, uh, I don't know, like to say it was depending on how lucky you were. And on that day, we started one boy, one girl, run, and everyone running. So one of my friends was a little heavy, and it was a boy. So he was competing against a girl. But that girl was, I'm not saying the girls are not attractive. All women, all girls are beautiful. But she arrived at classes, she didn't... I, I think that she took a shower, I think, but she didn't look like that. Her hair was a mess. Uh, she didn't have like beautiful nails. And it was, she was like, I can say disorganized because even you could see the backpack that she had was like, like someone who is not paying attention to appearance. So I think that she was like that, but nobody said anything. But on that day, she was running against my friend and my friend was a little heavy. So they started running at the same time. And when they were in the middle of the court, my friend fell, <laughs> fell down. So he fell on the, on, the, on the field, on the court, and the girl was behind him. So when my friend was on the floor, the girl tried to jump over him because she was running behind him. So she tried to jump over him, but when she jumped, I don't know how she did it, but she put her hands on the floor and her feet were up and all the skirt down. <laughs> so uh, what we could see was a uh, big pair of shorts, but big, not like, like underwear. It was a pair of shorts, shorts, but big. And they were like the Ninja Turtles uh, shorts. I don't know if you know the Ninja Turtles, Tortugas Ninjas. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So she was wearing, yes, I know. she was wearing shorts <laughs> of Ninja <laughs> Turtles. <laughs> And they were big, they were big. So when she put her hands on the floor and her feet were up, the skirt got down and we could see only the big pair of shorts of the Ninja Turtle and everyone laughed, but she was ashamed. So we returned, we, we finished class and we went back to the classroom. When we were in the classroom, <laughs> she told one of my friends, I was so lucky and then my friend said, why? Because thank God I was wearing good shorts. <laughs> and then everybody laughed again. So it was because they weren't shorts like for girls. They were more like shorts to go to the beach. And Aww. that was funny. It was funny for everyone, but not for her. And not for after, after that day, when the teacher asked for some ideas to have a class, everyone said, why don't we run? Why don't we run? And everyone made fun of her. So it was like that. But she wasn't like, I don't know what she had exactly, but she wasn't sociable. And sometimes she said things that were like nonsense. Nonsense. For example, one day, when is your birthday? And then she said in Spanish, not in English, when is your birthday? And she said, May 35th. Wow. Do you understand it? She was saying, the teacher asked her, ¿Cuándo es tu cumpleaños? And she was like, uh, 35 de mayo. And then everyone was like this. Can you repeat it? Yes, 35 de mayo. 35 de mayo, are you sure? And then she said, yeah. And then we were okay and everyone laughed, but she didn't catch it. So I don't know, I don't know why, but it was funny too. Yes? So that was my experience that I wanted to share. Now let's go back to main station. Okay.
Oops. <laughs> what happened? Who's <laughs> coughing? Okay, so picture, open your cameras. Open your cameras, your cameras, your camera. Using. Show me your microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. One, two, three. Now, just to finish, because Sylvia has an emergency. So, what you have to do starting today is that you have to keep a diary. You have to write every single day what you did on that day. So, that means every night you have to write what you did on that day. So you will start, dear diary, today was an amazing day. I met someone in the supermarket. I got up pretty early to go there because my mom wanted to, to make some bread, so she needed some flour. So I went to the supermarket to buy some, and I was trying to find it when suddenly I saw, if it is a boy, I saw a boy next to me. If it is a girl, I saw a girl next to me. So I asked for help and she helped me find the, the flower that I needed. So uh, we started talking and we realized that we lived in the same neighborhood, but we, we didn't know each other like a crush, exactly. <laughs> yeah, who, who made a crush? Eric, okay, good for you. Just joking, teacher. <laughs> So it might be, I don't know what kind of experiences, but you can tell your experiences, uh, meeting people or what you did. If you didn't do anything, you only stayed home, but describe what you did at home. So dear diary, today was a boring day. I woke up really late at about 10 a.m. I didn't have breakfast because I was uh, like a little sleepy. So I decided to watch a movie and later I took a shower around noon. Later, I entered to class, to my English class. I saw this topic, I talked with my partners, my friend told me about his experience, this, this, and this, this, and this, and this. So you tell or you write on your diary what you did from the morning until the moment that you're writing the diary. And you're not going to, to send it to anyone. Yes, you're not going to send it to anyone. What you have to do is to write that thing every single day because tomorrow you're going to work in Paris and you need to tell your classmate about your diary. You are going to read your diary to your classmate. Now, what are you going to include? Obviously, the past because you're going to describe what you did. Yes? And at the end of the, the description of what you did, I need that you write what you're going to do the next day. Yes. So you say today I did this, 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 and this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Tomorrow I'm going to have a class in the morning at about 8 a.m. I'm going to have breakfast early at 7 a.m. because I have a class at 8. I'm going to meet a friend at the mall because it is her birthday. So I'm going to buy a present for her and we are going to eat cake. Something like that. So mainly the simple past. And later, you describe something that you're going to do next day. Yes? So that's for every single day. So I hope to hear you tomorrow describing that thing that you wrote on your diary. So I see you tomorrow and have a good one. Bye, guys. Bye, teacher.